This time I'll call the April 29th, 2021 meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> We do have a few things to add to the agenda. And so first of all, um, we're gonna be adding a, uh, it's the Chapman, Chapman police uh, body cameras and it's to use diversion funds for that. Uh, we also have an addition to approve a KDHE grant for hazard pay for the health department and EMS staff. And I believe that's the only two items we had to add. And so I would move that we approve that agenda as amended. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the April 22nd meeting. It also includes the payroll of $314,765.43. It includes the abatements of $41,100, a check for the sheriff's office of $104,831.91. I move to accept the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and the second. Is there any discussion or question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. We'll go on to commission comments. Uh, Ron? No comments. Hey, uh, Craig? Yeah. Uh, Janelle and Derek and I will be attending the North Central Regional Planning Commission in Beloit today in person. Uh, Derek's going along because there's going to be a hazardous household waste disposal from the Kansas Partners environment be there. And then we have other people that are in uh, Washington County, Riley County, Cloud County, some other the, the same thing that he does, but not, don't wear as many hats. That's all I have, Lynn. Okay. Earlier, we had our work study session and Russ Wilkins was in with EMS, said that there had been some additional or more activity maybe than usual, um, which isn't necessarily a good thing because it involved there were more accidents. One of the things that we did discuss, and I think it, it might be something that we could pursue, we do have certain stop signs that have extra flashers on them to try to alert the drivers and make them more aware. And some of these are in areas either there's been some accidents or a higher traffic. Um, as was mentioned, sadly, one of the accidents that occurred had one of those signs, but regardless, um, we may want to look in to see if we can expand that to any locations. But I wonder also if um, in a news release uh, or, or something, I think sometimes it's helpful to identify these are intersections where there's the most accidents or a higher frequency of accidents. And I think sometimes when people feed that or maybe they hear it um, you know on the radio program <clears throat> through the newspaper I think sometimes they become more aware because it's like wow that's an intersection I go through or that's a you know I travel that part of old 40 or 18 or whatever and and you know if it just increases the awareness or people to think about it you know that's um, you need to be safe everywhere obviously I think that's something we might look into the other thing, and I'll go ahead and bring this up, and I meant to bring it up earlier. Um, like today, we have a few more people in the room, and I have had a few people from the public say, rather than go online, um, I, I think we need to say, you know, is the room capacity 12, or is it 15, or is it 10? Um, come up with a number and see if we can implement something. If someone wants to come in to view the meeting, that they could put in a request or such and and somehow we can accommodate that if they'd want to make their comments here in person rather than online and then having said that i i don't necessarily want to reserve a seat for one or two people week after week after week and then have someone come in for something special you know that particular day and somehow be excluded so you know I, i'm sure you, you try to keep things simple but yet there's you know potential obstacles so um, maybe if we could do that, um, 
so at the end of the month or starting June or, or some point, we can go ahead and um, give the opportunity to those that want to come into the meeting. Um, are there any other comments that anyone would want to make? Uh, there was nothing on the computer, Lynn. No. Okay. I did receive some uh, comments from people and mostly on the 3030 and um, said that they would like to see the county follow the course of action that a few other counties have. And I think there's about half a dozen counties that have opted out of the 3030 uh, that are part of the Kansas region. Um, I know Phillips County has, uh, Russell County, but I know there were some others mentioned and I don't recall those. And also I did have um, someone stop by the office and they just said they were very aware from reading the newspaper that uh, elected officials on local level, whether city or county, um, have some difficult decisions and sometimes, you know, some circumstances that are challenging and they just wanted to encourage us and thank us for the work that we did um, just based on the fact that it's important to have good local involvement and so anyway it was, it was, it was nice to hear that compliment we do not have anything else we do not have any petitions or proclamations we do have this time for public comment and if there is anyone that would want to comment uh, that is visiting us online on an item that is not on the agenda this would be your opportunity to do that and you would just need to go ahead and give your name and your uh, address and we're five minutes um, is what we have on this and I see uh, Megan Armstrong would like to speak if you'd go ahead good morning I'm attempting to share my screen but it's not not allowing me at the moment so I'm not sure I wanted to, uh, first of all, really Megan Armstrong, 1173-040. Make sure I get that done. <laughs> I am, it's not letting me screen share right now, so that's all right. I'll send these documents to you guys. Um, as far as the Kansas-Nebraska Heritage Act, um, Brad Holman said that it's just for a feel good. Um, Jer Senator Jerry Moran has already sent in a letter saying that he um, feels like that we are already under the conservative stewardship program and that this is um, not a good idea. Um, the governor of Nebraska has also sent a letter forward stating that um, he expresses the opposition, the opposition to this uh, plan to seek National Heritage Area for all of the counties there in Nebraska, stating that it poses the risk of federal overreach in our communities, federal approvals from the National Park Service, unquantifiable and unknowable risks for the future, as well as it can change at any time without vital input from the states eroding state and local control, that would be you guys, of decision making regarding our land and communities. It also has a significant bureaucratic barrier to infrastructure and other important projects in our county. So the things that I'm considering looking at right now real time, the wind project down in Hope would be affected by this. You would have to go through yet another panel of people to approve that project, as well as that private airstrip. Um, we already have enough hoops to jump through. Why on earth would we add another layer? And, and maybe you guys like doing paperwork. I, I don't know. But um, I imagine that would also burn up time and those extra approvals. Um, as Lynn said earlier, there are actually five counties here in Kansas that have already opted out. And it's kind of putting a pretty big hole in this national heritage area. Uh, and those counties are Clay County, Republic County, Sheridan County, Russell County, and Ottawa County. And if I was able to screen share, you'd see that that's a pretty good chunk right out of the middle of that heritage area. And um, I just, I really think that there were, when do you remember, there were how many people in that room that night? Probably about 150 people at that meeting. And the question um, was asked. I, I had um, heard there were 150, 175. Very crowded room though. And quite a few people from throughout the county and a few from yeah. surrounding counties. Correct. And so, there wasn't a single hand or a certain person that jumped up and said, you know what, I want my land in that. And I think Brad Herman made a good point earlier when he said that this is supposed to be voluntary. At this point, there's not a single landowner that's received a letter in the mail that says, hey, would you like your property included in this? Um, so I think that it's great that it's voluntary, but when you haven't taken the time to really ask that landowner whether they want to be included, that's a violation of private property rights. Um, and you can check uh, with Doug probably on that. And um, 
I just think that maybe there's a town hall that needs to be called for this for you guys to get that input. Um, there were a lot of private property owners that were really concerned about this, and I don't, I don't think I'm going to respectfully disagree with that, Holman, that this is a third issue. This is a real concern for how these, this National Heritage Act is going to cause people to, to either be, allow things fenced in, build structures like, like the windmills. Um, it, this is a real issue that could affect things in, in real time, and I think that I'm going to side with the senator. Uh, Senator Bran and the governor of Nebraska and these other counties and say this is a really important issue that needs to be brought to the table sooner than later. And, and I hope that that will be put on the agenda next meeting or have a town hall the next two weeks because this is a pressing issue. Um, I appreciate your time this morning, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Are there any others that had a comment that they would want to make or a question they had during the public comment session? Okay, we do not appear to have any other comments. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the next item on the agenda. And thank you those that are watching online and listening in. And we, this is a recorded meeting. So there are also people that later after the fact um, go online to review the meeting <laughs> that took place okay um, we'll go ahead and go to our report of county officers and brad we have you up first okay the best news i've got today is that the fair road bridge will be open today or tomorrow uh, i was up yesterday and took a look at it and martin reported to me that uh, the guardrail vendor or contractor was there working on it which they were and they had uh, just about completed the north side guardrail. That was at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, so I think probably they'll have it done uh, if they didn't get it done yesterday today. So uh, I'm pretty confident. Uh, I did take, talk to the uh, inspector on site, and he was pretty sure they'd have it available to open up either tonight or tomorrow. So that's excellent news. The downside, you know there's a downside to everything. The downside to that is that starting Monday or Tuesday, they're gonna close Fair Road again in the 2400 block but it's only for a couple of days to replace a, a small structure there with three large tubes. So our crews are doing that. So uh, they will get it closed and, and done and reopened in two to three days. So uh, it's a sign of progress, I guess. And, and of course, then those locations will be good. We are doing, uh, I believe that section of the road gets the overlay. This is the one the guys started doing overlay. So Martin wanted to get it, the, the tubes replaced before they do that. So it gets a good overlay across it and we don't have to tear up our new asphalt later. So um, we did, uh, Derek did contact me. We had the, the compactor, the big compactor out the transfer station. Um, one of the welds on the turnbuckle broke earlier this week, uh, snapped and, and it was damaged and uh, it, it caused the trailer that they were filling to flip sideways or something. I haven't been out there, but uh, they're in the process of getting it repaired. We think that, uh, Martin's guys can do the welding and the repair on that first of next week, but the compactor and the trailer has to be empty. The trailer has to be uprighted and the compact and it has to be emptied first so we don't cause a fire with the material inside. So they're in the process of getting that done and hopefully that will end up being a minor repair rather than something major that we have to contract out. So uh, the last thing I've got is the ongoing saga with the roof of the courthouse. Um, we did, uh, the roofing contractor did come out uh, Tuesday this week and get up and look at that with Chansey and, and uh, our construction superintendents. And um, his opinion is that, uh, and I think I relayed to you before the preliminary uh, inspection was that it was installed improperly. Uh, he said it absolutely was. Uh, one thing we did learn is that in the, in the new renovation, there are a number of locations where we have to cut holes and put the new rooftop units on there uh, that are bigger than the old ones and stuff. So there's a whole lot of manipulation on that surface that needs to be done. We're looking at this point, it might be a better plan just to replan on replacing the whole thing. Uh, they're working on some cost estimates for that. There is a little bit of money in the existing budget uh, to cover some of those uh, uh, changes that were they knew from day one they were going to have to do up there. Uh, so uh, as far as that goes, I know Doug's still working on trying to uh, research the bond of, of the original contractor. I don't know that that looks very favorable, but 
he's working on it. And, and so, but I'll have more information hopefully in the next week or two on what that might, might look like. So. Brad Holt is a roof. Well, it's 10 years. Uh, we, we, we replaced it 10 years ago with a 25 year warranty roof, at least what we thought was 25 year warranty. Uh, since that time, that contractor that was out of Salina has gone out of business and his license was removed by the attorney general's office for whatever reason, that doesn't sound good. Uh, you know, and it, it kind of goes back to you. We do our best to do business with local businesses in the area and that's a risk you take sometimes. We do require them to be bonded and insured and this company was and and we've contacted the insurance company like we told you a couple weeks ago and to uh, do what we can to try and file a claim against the bond because of the inferior installation and uh, it's, it's in Doug's hands he's working on it so, so that's basically all. I'll have more information to report on that as, as things progress so that's all I've got today. Okay thank you. Doug? I'm going to be working on just what, what Brad said we're going to work and see if there's funding available for us from the bond. And uh, the second thing we'll be working on is here in about mid-May or somewhere along in there, we're going to take a look at uh, getting with the title companies again and seeing about getting our work completed so that we can move forward with the tax sale. Okay, very good. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. As far as notices and communications mentioned earlier, we did receive just a, a few comments I had or emails um, on the 3030 plan. Um, and that was something Lori mentioned also in her comments. Um, and, and we're you know certainly gathering information on it. I haven't had any other notices or communications and Craig or Ron. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. We do not have any resolutions. There are no uh, items under unfinished business, other business. We do have the first thing here is to consider the bids to install gates and fencing at the sheriff's range. And um, we have our sheriff here. So do you wanna kind of give an explanation of what's involved with that and the security measure being taken place with yes, that? Sir. We'd like to install six foot of chain link fence along the front of the range facility. To and two gates, 25 foot gates, a 20 foot gate and a 25 foot gate, just to secure the area. We had an incident back in August where there was some damage done to some vehicles out there. This might help keep people out, out there. We've got bids from three different um, fencing companies Big Red Fencing, Kansas Fencing, and Wildcat Services. Um, the low bid is from Big Red Fencing and Landscaping, landscaping for a total of $31,620. And that's the bid we'd like to go with. Okay. Is there an estimated completion time on that or? There was not. Um, he said that he probably wouldn't be able to get started on it until August because of the backlog right now and the, the, the problem of getting supplies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so and, and there is security out there now as far as in the building an alarm system and such, but, but this is just adding an extra level and would avoid an incident like what we had that one time. Yes, sir. Be paid out of it will be bad, uh, paid out of asset for return. Okay. Any other questions? I, I would a motion. I'll go ahead. That what you might talk to him about, Jerry, is he may want to purchase his materials now, uh, just simply because of the material, building material prices are so volatile, and he may want a partial payment on that now, and, I, and that certainly wouldn't be a problem, I don't think so. Okay, good idea. Could he store those out there? Or? Yeah, yeah, and it can be stored out there as well. So that wouldn't be a problem. Or his place, whatever he'd choose. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, we, like I mentioned, we ran into that on the on the courthouses. Some of the contractors are coming back and saying, "Well, since you, Lloyd Builder, since you awarded that, materials have gone up, and we won't, we need some extra money." And so far, they've said no. He signed a contract, but yeah. he might talk to to Big Red and just tell him if he wants to order the materials and get them in and deliver them out there, we can go ahead and pay him for the materials. So. That's a great idea because June or July, and you order them. At yeah, it could be it could be availability oh. yeah, is an issue. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the bid of thirty-one six twenty from Big Red Fence Company. Second. Okay, we have the motion and the second. Wait, what was the amount again, Sheriff? Just to be sure. Thirty-one thousand six hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. So we have the motion and the second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next item we have is uh, we have some conditional use permits, and so we will take those one at a time. The first one we have is a conditional use permit for Hope Ridge Wind Project. And um, so we'll go ahead and have just kind of your brief report on that. Sure, and then we'll consider each one as, individual. as I mentioned individually. Uh, all right, uh, this is a uh, basically uh, a continuation of uh, a Met the, uh, an initial Met Tower that was approved back in uh, December of 2016. This is a, these are similar proposals on five separate parcels. Uh, PC 21-4 is consideration of a conditional use permit for a, a temporary meteorological tower on a portion of land on the south half of section 23. Township 14 South Range 3 East, owned by Carol S. Rock Trust. Uh, the applicant is proposing installation of, uh, of a Met Tower, as well as four other Met Towers. In addition to this one, uh, the five subject parcels will contain one, one Met Tower each. The Met Towers will have guy wire support with wire dimensions ranging from a quarter inch to a third of an inch. The proposed towers will not be within range of the Abilene Municipal Airport and a no ride, no hazard uh, letter has been submitted by the FAA. All towers will meet the required setback from the property lines. Uh, the county uh, doesn't have to include a decommissioning plan since the decommissioning plan is already in each of the individual agreements with the property owners. In uh, 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 the uh, Planning Commission did uh, at their uh, April 15th meeting uh, recommend in a 5 to 0 vote uh, uh, to approve each case with the following conditions. Five separate building permits must be obtained with a total fee of $250. And uh, the applicant must inform staff in writing by email or letter 30 days prior to decommissioning of the pr uh, proposed towers. Uh, it was explained at the public hearing that uh, there would be three to four anemometers uh, that would be attached to each one of these five towers, uh, and uh, that uh, in a on a windy day, I think the question question came up is how noisy would these anemometers be? And I think it was explained by the applicants who are online right now uh, you know, have said that uh, if you were standing under these towers. On a windy day, you would hear the wind, you wouldn't hear the, the anemometers because they have a plastic small uh, component. Um, like the previous tower approved in 2016, this request is for a 10 for 10 years. Uh, it's going to be a five-year lease that's going to be renewed by the property owners of each of these properties. Uh, uh, if it extends beyond five years, and they'll they'll renew that uh, that agreement with their property owners and if it goes beyond 10 years, then they would have to come back here for a, a, an additional uh, extension on their conditional use. Uh, one in, uh, approved in 2016 has already been decommissioned uh, you know, within five years of when it was. So with that, uh, I will uh, turn it over to, uh, to the commission if you have any questions about uh, you know, any of these uh, individual parcels. Okay, and on this it includes the PC 21-4, 21-5, 21-6, 21-7, 21-8. Correct. And all the guidelines as far as setbacks and such have been addressed. That's correct. Are there questions from the commission on this? I know uh, Kyle Lockhouse and Garrick from Enel Power are available online. If you have any questions for them, they're the ones that are the applicants. I have no questions, Tim. We have our work session. I think we've covered everything I need to have answered. Okay. Yeah, good, Tim. Okay. We could entertain a motion then for that cup uh, for Hope Ridge Wind Project for meteorological towers. Is there a motion? So move. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second. Any other discussion? I should have asked if Kyle or Garrick, if you did want to speak um, 
let us know. Um, but I, it doesn't appear that there's any questions, and I think everything's been covered. Tim, can you uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you for your time and consideration, board. Um, really appreciate it. There is only one thing I would I would like to correct. Um, some of the leases with the landowner were actually were ten years. There was a that was a mistake on my end, and uh, I was quickly corrected after that. Um, we were originally thinking five years, but several of them worked out to be ten years. So the conditional use permit is not impacted by that or changed. I just wanted to clarify for the record, um, you know, perhaps there there will likely be recorded memorandums at the county. So just for, for clarification purposes, the leases with the landowners will, will be 10 years as well. So that, that was it. And I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions as needed, but apologies for the mix up. Okay, thank you for that uh, correction and clarification. Uh, Tim, the, that wouldn't necessarily impact anything we're deciding today. No, not at all. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Oh, I have any. Okay, we do have the motion. We have the second for approval of this conditional use permit for the Hope Ridge Wind Project. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tim's work isn't done yet. We have another conditional use permit. This is the Hauser Custom Ag Inc. And this is for a private airstrip. Yes, uh, this is a conditional use permit uh, for certification of a private landing strip for a commercial crop dusting business at the request of Hauser Custom Ag, general, generally located at 1485 Camp Road. The Planning Commission recommended approval unanimously uh, with the following conditions. Submit to staff a copy of the Kansas Department of Health and Environment approval and compliance letter for fuel and chemical storage related to this use along with the most recent inspection report uh, and also submit a copy of any FAA approval once received. Uh, this to kind of give you a little background uh, on this, uh, as the, uh, it was uh, came to our attention uh, the, the months ago, uh, I believe that uh, the Hauser Custom Ag had, had inquired with me about who to contact at the federal level to see about getting certification as an emergency landing strip. They only use this uh, uh, strip, I think it was my understanding, a few days out of the year. Uh, and uh, they wanted to, uh, I, I directed them to the FAA, and I also said they would have to go through a CUP on this since there's uh, chemical storage and, and uh, fuel storage as well. And I believe uh, Danae Hauser is uh, available for any questions if you have any. I think the runway is quarter mile. I believe it is. Pretty lays pretty flat. I'm going out there. It's pretty flat. Yeah. It runs north south, and uh, it's uh, and I, I made a distinction for the planning commission at the public hearing. I said that there's uh, uh, if it were a situation where there was just a, a farmer or, or property owner says, okay, you can land your plane here, this is a strip you can have uh, to, to land your plane and look over your your plane before you take back off again if there's technical issues. But uh, they that could be approved administratively by staff, but it's uh, because this is there's fuel storage and chemical storage on site, then that's that makes it a commercial use and they would have to go through the CUP on that. And it's actually showing it a half a mile long. Yeah. 2,640. 2, the maintenance of, um, so there, are there any inspections that take place later? Is it just up to the private property owner to maintain it as far as FAA? That would be, that would be up to KDHE mainly for the, uh, uh, as far as the uh, storage of the chemicals and, and the fuel. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, as far as the runway itself that would I, I'm not really sure how the FAA works that I think they do and they, they may have their own inspections guidelines they have since uh, since the planning commission meeting uh, uh, the housers have submitted their paperwork that they submitted to the FAA their application and that's pending and uh, so I've got that I didn't bring it with me today but I do have it on file 
in power lines in a way. So this would be a commercial activity also. So yes. from that standpoint too, it's in some ways a, a business expansion or opportunity yes. for someone. And you mentioned um, uh, one of the housers is on the line. If, yes, Danae is on. Yes, if you want to make any comments, um, I mean, it's not necessary, but, but if you do want to offer any comments, uh, you could. And quite often an applicant does listen in and, and such, but if there's no specific questions, um, it's certainly not necessary for them to, to, to speak to the issue. And are any questions from the commission? I have one question. The emergency medical personnel, like from Dickinson County, will they have access to this in case of an emergency? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, they will. Okay. Okay, we would need to have a motion to approve this conditional use permit. I'll make a motion to accept it. Second. Okay, we have the motion and the second. This conditional use permit is for the Hauser Custom Ag as for a private airstrip. PC 21 9. Any other discussion? Question? We have the motion and the second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, the next item we have, and this is a conditional use permit also. This is for Ritchie Brothers Auctioneers and Chadwick. Uh, pronounce the name for me, please. Chubbles. 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 okay. And uh, for a storage facility. So if you'd offer your report on that, uh, Tim. Yes, this is uh, for an online government auction uh, storage facility for online government auctions. Uh, at the request of the uh, Mr. Chabots and uh, Richie Brothers, located at 2175 Deer Road, uh, the Planning Commission recommended uh, unanimously to uh, approve with the following conditions. Uh, there is currently a road maintenance agreement that the Richie Brothers have signed with uh, the Lincoln Township. So one of the conditions is maintain the road maintenance agreement with the township. No staging of items on bare dirt, which is my understanding that there won't be any bare dirt on, on that site. Uh, maintain any licensing with Kansas Department of Health and Environment. Uh, and in the event the use is discontinued at this location, the applicant must perform a phase one environmental study upon vacating the premises. And what the Planning Commission's motivation in that was because uh, there was apparently a phase one study that was submitted uh, prior to them that the, the, the Ritchie brothers had done prior to moving on to that site to make sure that it was up to snuff and so uh the, this is just a way of being trying to be the planning commission being consistent and so if they vacate based on this use uh, so that they could do another phase one study before they vacate it if, if there's ever anything that happens uh but it's my understanding that they intend to be here for a while so uh, and the applicants are here for this. Uh, if you have any questions, they're right behind me. Okay. Are there any questions from the commission? The military surplus is, is a lot of come for Ryder from all over the nation. All over the country. All over the country. This side, we support everything from Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, uh, some parts of Oklahoma, and Missouri. Coming in on semis, or how we have stuff delivered? Um, occasionally, yes. I mean, for the most part, on semi, some of the stuff we flat to ourselves. I know you. I see you got an agreement with Lincoln Township, the Columbia, and I, I guess it's between you and them. But you know, to, you know, you get somebody running down the road, kind of like farmers and stuff. You a little more, you know, how are you going to determine? They going to come to you if uh, they feel that you're damaging the road, or you put it out with them? Yeah, I mean, we about spoke with. Oh. Um, Township quite okay. I mean, anything that they need, our doors are always open for okay. everybody. All right, Lynn. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? I don't have any. Lynn. Okay, this is for the conditional use permit for Ritchie Brothers Auctioneers and Chadwick. Two bulls. <laughs> Two bulls. Okay. I'll let you mess that. Does that, that get mispronounced very often? Or? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for uh, considering Dixon County for uh, uh, business. Um, the motion and the second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
Okay, one item uh, that we added um, had to do with the hazard pay. And Brad, if you you gave a summary in the work study session, but if you'd go ahead and do that again, please. And yeah, we we had, uh, as we all know, our a number of our staff, including the health department, EMS, uh, put in a lot of extra time and sweat and hazard uh, regarding the hazard of the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, and it was primarily between April 1st and December 31st. Uh, the health department, uh, John did apply for a grant from KDHE and received a substantial grant from them that would help pay for not only some of the salaries this year and helping deal with the uh, the COVID, ongoing COVID issues, but it's also capable of paying uh, uh, what they refer to as hazard pay for some of the staff that is subjected to that. So uh, we came up with a plan or a request that we would uh, compensate each one of the health department staff and the EMS staff that worked during that time period, uh, April 1 to December 31 with uh, $1 per hour worked during that time period, which would equate to about $1,560 each. Done through payroll, so money in their pocket would be less uh, less income taxes and and, and uh, those expenses um, that would be retroactive during that time period. And again, the grant will pay for that expense. So I think it's a, a small token to show our appreciation for the troubles and hazards that they went through at that time period and expressed in the in the work session just as an example besides all the phone calls and lengthy hours and oftentimes working Saturday and Sunday not getting a weekend or, and the meetings and you know to say that the public was stressed and, and they were stressed is an understatement but you flip over to the EMS side and, and actually in their in their world going out and dealing with people that you know are positive COVID patients. It's not a question of they could be positive or they could be exposed uh, in, in that area. You're dealing with people that are positive and that are ill and that are contagious and having to, and getting that page and knowing that when you, you know, you're responding to that type of call. So they put on all their PPE, which is, uh, you know, included the, the hoods and the gowns and the gloves. And you get there and deal with the patient, and then the one the the employee that's driving the ambulance has to take that off before they get in the driving compartment. And then when he gets to the hospital, put it all another set of new on uh, to deal with the patient again, and just the hazards and hassles that are outside the norm. Not to mention the psychological, mental anguish that they all went through. So our recommendation is to do that. The total uh, amount would be roughly forty thousand dollars. For those 26 employees okay and that is something that we went through with uh, hr and and so we're it's it's um i think it's advantageous to wait till we actually receive the money and kind of wait here at the end to utilize that um are there any any questions from the commission. Is there a motion to go ahead and um, have this hazard play pay um, in place? I'll make that motion. We have the motion. I'll make the second that we go ahead and utilize that hazard pay uh, as what Brad had described. Any other question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, um, the other item we had was a, uh, we had a letter uh, from Andrea Purvis and it was in regards to the diversion fund and that she would recommend to release funds to the Chapman Police Department. And this would be for body cams. And this is something that um, they had made a request and this is something that's part of the diversion funds is to um, take care of situations like this that have to do with law enforcement. Go ahead and move that we um, allow these diversion funds to be released for that purpose for the Chapman Police Department. Okay. That was in the amount of $5,000. $5,000, yes, thank you. 
So we have the motion and the second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. I do not believe we have any other business before the commission. We don't. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. We're adjourned. Okay. Okay, it's April 29th, 2021. Uh, although we had adjourned the meeting here uh, just a few minutes ago at 11.43, we are opening the meeting back up. And um, kind of for clarification, it's just kind of a housekeeping item that we did not have a motion and a second um, on the last item conditional use permit that we did. And so uh, we want to take care of that at this time. And then also, it, it's very likely that some that were online have already um, left and are not watching. So we will go ahead and cover this in the in our next meeting. Also, uh, just to mention that that's what we did as far as in the minutes of the next meeting. So we've just extended it for a few minutes for that, and we did have a conditional use permit for the Ritchie Brothers Auctioneers and Chadwick Chaboots. Chaboots. Yeah. Okay. For a storage facility and we had the discussion on it but we do need a motion for the record and a second i'll make the motion second it. okay we have the motion and the second for the conditional use permit for ritchie brother auctioneers and chadwick Chabults for a storage facility any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries and i apologize uh, for missing that earlier um, it was my mistake but this is the quickest way to correct it and make it official for the record because it is a, a actually a, a business opportunity not only for these individuals but it benefits Dickinson County. Any other discussion before we adjourn? Need a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll make the second and so we have the motion and the second to adjourn all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned.